Hi guys, this is Sam from Fluid Social. Talking to you from secret location in Canary Walk, where I live. Um, today I want to talk to you guys about um, the different ways that you can go out and make this happen. So it's something that I'm getting asked, asked a lot by clients at the moment. They're saying things like, you know, is this the only way? Is the only way to go out and meet people? to go up and, and talk to them in the street or in groups? Is that the only way that I can do this? And the answer that I usually come to is no, but it's probably the most dramatic and extreme way. And for a lot of people who struggle with social skills and struggle to become socially confident, you do want to throw yourself in the deep end. You know, we have this constant tug of war in our mind about you know, should I, should I jump straight in or should I dip my toes, right? We know the idea of a spring, that a spring sort of expands and then contracts. But if you pull it past a certain point, it breaks all together. But I think that for the most part, guys that need to, you know, go out and really start improving their social skills and, and meeting people and, and maybe dating as well, the most extreme way that you can build the courage to do that and build yourself up in a meaningful way where you can do that is to go out and meet new people cold in, um, in random environments, you know, in places that you aren't conditioned for or accustomed to. However, it's not the only way. And that's partly what I want to go into today. We should be optimizing our lives in ways that allow for the greatest possible social cohesion, the greatest possible social opportunity. So, you know, I have some clients now saying, you know, Sam, like I want to do the six week course. Um, by the way, I'm all, almost finished with uh, the six week course, which will take you from basically wherever you are to being able to go out and meet anyone anywhere, particularly for guys who are interested in the dating side to go out and talk to whoever you want, any woman, anytime, anywhere. Um, but a lot of the guys are saying, look, I'd love to do it. But I live so far away from London, right? I live in South, far South London. And to you know to be going out all the time i can't do it and i'm saying well you know if you've got the money and you've got the drive and the and the initiative to want to go out and improve this part of your life then surely a priority should be situating yourself in an area that has a high footfall or has certain social um institutions set up right if you're close to a very big active gym or if you're going to yoga classes or meditation classes or any type of cookery classes martial arts anything where you're going to be around people that should be the bread and butter you should be optimizing your life first so that it's not difficult for you to become social you know i was living for the first couple of uh, first month in london i was living in a hotel essentially not too far from the action, but I made sure that I had Portobello Road close by. I had a pretty active and sociable gym, but it was starting to get a little bit isolated living in just a hotel room. I met a few people coming in and out of the hotel, but for me, I want to have socializing as part of my structure, part of what I wake up into. And so I've moved into a sort of more co-living space now because it offers that opportunity to meet people all the time, to be just a, a, a door away from, from my friends and from people that I wanna meet and get to know. And so this is what I wanna go into today. What can you do to optimize your living conditions so that you don't need to always be relying on going out and approaching, but you actually have stuff closer to home. And this is all things that I'm gonna go over in the six week course as well. We cover everything. We even cover some of the more holistic sides what you can do to get a basis of, um, of, of health, if that's what you're lacking in, or just optimize um, the way that you treat your lifestyle in terms of health and finances as well, wealth development and, and you know, getting onto the right path so that you're balancing the three, the health, wealth and love. But essentially, what have you got? This is how I think about it for myself. I think, what am I interested in? And of those things that I'm interested in, which ones also will have good social opportunities. So take something like uh, rugby. A lot of guys like rugby. And it's like, well, great. Okay, rugby's great. And you should enjoy that and go with your friends and watch the rugby. But what do you expect to be the sort of de general demographic in a pub or at a get together where you're watching the rugby, right? It's, it's likely to be your close friends who you already know really well. 
um, few other people likely, and definitely not a very mixed environment of, of you know men and women and everything else. So that would be good because you like it, but it's not maybe an opportunity to meet uh, people that you really want to connect with and people that you want to meet. And it might, if you're a guy that's looking to find a girlfriend or date women, perhaps going and watching the rugby with your friends is not an environment that's very conducive to that. So right, let's think of something else. What if you're interested in music or art? Maybe you could just go to a small exhibition with a friend um, that's very empty. Or could you find something that you're interested in that is also likely to have that footfall, is likely to have those social opportunities of people with a like mind when you're doing something that you actually enjoy doing in the first place. So take something like the Saatchi Gallery in Chelsea. It's got cool modern art exhibitions. It's got a young, fun, healthy demographic of people. And you can go there for a day, enjoy yourself, get to know the community a little bit around there, and also have a really good reason to meet other people and get to know other people. What about yoga, meditation? Well, if you go there, you're bound to, to connect with people. And not only that, but something that's as sort of thought provoking or thought eliminating in some senses as mindfulness, you're going to be in an, a sort of an inclusive um, environment where everyone is programming themselves to become open and to become um, aware of what's going on. So that's an amazing opportunity to meet people. And they're likely to be people that also have an interest in staying healthy and, and keeping their mind healthy and their, their body as well. So this is really important. It's not, an, it's not an aside. It's not like, oh, I'll think about that in the future. This is your bread and butter. This is every day you wake up in an environment. And if that environment is opposed to how you want your social life to look, then you have to repair from the ground up. There's no amount of fabrication, right? Going up and, and just running up to, to, to people in the streets. That's not going to do it because that's just like masking over the problem. The problem is that structurally, your life is not accommodating what you find important, which at this stage, if you're watching this, I imagine, is your social life, your social network, your dating life. So let's think about rebuilding this from the start. Go over three things that you enjoy and that also are appealing to other people and think about it, right? It might be that you were once interested in painting and you no longer thought about it much and you're spending a lot of your time maybe doing cold approach and instead you could think, why don't I just go to a life drawing um, class? Why don't I go here and actually build a little community, restructure your life from the ground up? So what I want you guys to do is think about three things that you're interested in and that are all also going to be catalysts to social interaction. And then I want you to include them into your week, one hour of each, and take that out of the time that you otherwise use for socializing, right? So, you know, everyone who's, who's actually watching my channel and taking action should be doing about five or six hours of applied sort of social um, activity, whether that be cold approach or whether that be doing certain classes or becoming sociable in your, in your exercise environment or whatever else it is, I want you to start thinking about what can I do to improve the structural nature of my social life. So I hope that is a thought provoking idea for you guys and at least a reminder to start considering this outside of the usual box that I think a lot of people do. You know, a lot of my content is just focused on the cold approach side, but that's because it's very difficult to create something that's applicable to everyone um, and that's engaging in the same way that the, the, the videos that I create are. So thank you guys for all the feedback on the recent videos. I, I think um, I'm glad that you guys have noticed the step up in, in video quality as well as the content itself. So yeah, I appreciate that. And as I said, anyone that wants to talk, um, my six week course is gonna be released on September the 1st. We've got just under a month. It's the game changer. This is everything that I've learned compiled into a structured coaching system that has been working by far the best with all of my clients. So I'm really, really excited to, to release it. There's a full video course, audio files that you listen to, sort of like guided social meditations, and one-on-one -on -one calls every week to get you towards your goals. We set personal goals each week, all towards a large goal at the end. You've got a group of like-minded guys. I've got two, two uh, spaces sold and three remaining. So that's for the first run of the six-week course. 
that will come out on September the 1st. So I really look forward to talking to you guys about that or anything else. I am still doing some one-to-one -one coaching sessions, usually on Fridays and Saturdays. But obviously, I'm, I'm stepping a little bit back from doing those. So the spaces are very limited on the one-to-one -one coaching. Um, so yeah, I look forward to talking to you guys on, on the Calendly call. As always, I will post a link to that right here, right now, um, so that you guys can just find the link in the comments on this video and book a call with me whenever you want. Um, and yeah, guys, ask any questions. I'll go through all the questions now so that you guys can, uh, can ask away. Hi, Sam, says Facebook user. Hello, Facebook user. Cooper, I've hewn up to nine people, all rejected. Anything I can do to improve? Um, that's down to you, man. Your sense of improvement in this arena is based on the lessons that you're learning. Now, the two points that I always stress are the most important things to consider when you're doing this is rep repetitive action, repetition, and active learning. And the active learning side means to look for lessons on the surface of the interaction. So you, you talk to someone, the interaction comes to an end, and you think, right, well, what, what could I do? What, what was maybe a lesson there? Was there something I did or said that was disingenuous? Did I do or say something that caused them to react in a negative way? And then is that something that is a pattern? Has that happened in my last interactions? And we all have the technical ability to go over our work and to see whether there are errors. And after, you know, very few patterns start to emerge, you may be saying the same thing and getting the same response. And if that's the case, correct it. You literally add and subtract. It's so much simpler than people think it is. If something is not working or if people are getting bored, um, what, what, at what point is that happening? And what can you do to spike that conversation and to keep it interesting, to keep them engaged? If um, it's going really well, figure out where it's going well and keep that lesson and discard the rest. Repetition and active learning and then applying what you're, you're learning to the repetition. That's how you learn. So I don't know what you can improve, man, because I haven't seen it. You know what you can improve. You actually know. You know what you're doing wrong. It's helpful to have the guidance of the coach. And that's the main, uh, the main thing that I do. It's really not teaching new information. It's revealing to you what you already know about your situation. But if you look over those interactions and you say, right, well, at what point did the person I was speaking to become disengaged or anxious or, or not want to continue the conversation? You actually know if you care to look for the lessons. So just look for the lessons on the surface and then keep going. The organic way is still the best way. Nothing could beat the adrenaline of going up to a stranger and making something happen. Yeah, I, I agree, man. I think it's really important. I think it's important more from a sense of challenge and overcoming difficulty than of anything else, right? A lot of a lot of you guys, and I consider myself in this group, we have, everyone has problems, you know, everyone has difficult things, notions, ideas in their life that they have to confront. But for the most part, we have it pretty easy, right? And that's testament to the fact that the most part of our day, we're not worrying about anything serious we're not experiencing anything particularly serious and that creates a sense of lethargy of like what is there actually that we can do of meaning All right we're no longer fighting wars um we're no longer facing uh, attacks from wild animals we have lives of pretty much complete luxury for for 80 90 percent of them and so we we have this vacuum where once was challenge where once was difficulty and it makes us feel useless because we no longer have the outlet to express our sense of conquest or achievement. And for me, as you said, mystery, the, the organic way is still the best way. It's the it's the the ground zero for feeling like you have a sense of of conquest in your life. It's very difficult to martial arts is a great way. Um, working towards a, an athletic goal in the gym is a good way. Building something real you know, with your hands, um, building something, having an idea and pursuing it. But all of these are very long term. And if you don't have those short term hits of, con of conquest, of feeling like you're achieving, it can be very difficult to maintain the motivation to pursue the long term goals. And so for me, 
um, the organic way is still the best way. Being able to go up and talk to anyone at any time of your own will and know that you have the opportunity to make something beautiful, to make something happen. That's so important because it gives us that instant hit of conquest, of achievement, of feeling like we've, we've made a change in the world. We've improved someone else's day. We've improved our own outlook. Our energy is higher. We're more socially open. We have the, the dopamine after the, um, the, the um, what's the word, cortisol of the fear and the anxiety. We have the dopamine rush. Yes, I agree. I don't think I need to go into online dating much more because I think you all know my thoughts on it. And if you genuinely don't, then feel free to ask that question. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard I've heard about that. I've heard that in South, not just Southeast Asia, but all of East Asia, including, um, yeah, basically everywhere is much more social circle. And there's this sort of caste system, almost a sense that like, if you're in a certain group, you're above people in another group. And I think there's some racial elements to that as well. Um, certainly in Japan, I've heard there is. Um, so, so yeah, the, the, a lot of people, I think the majority of, of, of people consider social circles and, and social networks their only outlet, right? The great superpower that you guys have is that you can also have this secondary source of input, which is the cold approach. But I would really recommend not letting that become everything because that's when you re roam into the territory of pickup artistry, thinking that your whole life is dependent on this one activity. And then if someone asks you, what do you do? What do you do in your spare time? And all you can really say is that uh, I, I cold approach people. I mean, that's a pretty tragic um, way to live unless you genuinely love it, right? Which is um, your right as well. But in most parts of the world, having a social circle and a social network is the, is the fundamental way that people meet and connect and, and date and everything else. So that should always be your first consideration is like, what's the foundations of your social life? What's the foundations of your life in a sense? And how are you dividing your time between those health, wealth and love so that everything is automatic and organic and you don't have to add the veneer of, um, of you know, approaching all the time. Do you do taster sessions, Sam? Yes, I do. But as I said, I'm sort of pushing clients more towards um, this six-week course because I, you know, if I'm doing a taster session, you've got my full attention for however long it lasts, right? Between two and five hours. However, if you're going to be asking me questions afterwards and I have 40, 50 other guys doing it, it's very difficult for me to give you the attention that you deserve. Why I'm so excited about this six-week course is that you have my full attention as well as the attention of the other guys in the group, right? It's a group of five guys in WhatsApp. So you're going to have the total support of all of these people, including me. And that's going to be my sole um, channel of attention. So I really think it's the best way, right? I've been coaching for a long time and I've done it in many different ways. And at this stage, just doing a one day course, I don't have... I don't have the resources to be able to help you in the way that you're going to want to. And accountability is one of the major ways, right? I've done this with my financial life recently. I, I hired um, a financial coach for six weeks because I, it's not enough for him to just create a spreadsheet. It's not enough for someone to just give you advice and look over you. You need someone that you can go to and ask any questions and know is invested in your success. And unfortunately, you know, for a couple of hours, it's becoming difficult for me to delegate my time to just a, a one day course because I know that the real value comes in the long term. It comes in the constant accountability. It comes in the habit for me. It comes in the constant input of resources and information and, and accountability, as I said. Have you ever been called out uh, for day gaming? How do you handle this? Yes, I have. I generally handle it. Um, I generally handle it by just expressing almost surprise that I've been lumped into that category, right? Because I'm, I tend not to use this terminology, man. And the reason is, is that I don't believe it needs to be used, right? I don't believe that saying that you, you know, going up and meeting someone because you felt inspired to talk to them. I don't believe that that needs to be termed in this blanket term. And I don't believe it needs to use the language of the sort of, the, the, that short fashion of 
of what was going on in the early 2000s with pickup artistry. It, does, it doesn't have to be like that. This is something normal to go out and meet people um, and not outsource your social life to, to Tinder and to Instagram, but to be an actual social agent in your own life. And so, yes, I've been called out. And I usually just say, I usually just question the term. I say, what, is, what, is, what does that mean? Right? Because what does it mean? And, you know, if they dig deeper and they say it's about this, I say, oh, no, that's not what I'm doing. I saw you and I wanted to meet you. Um, this is just a, a conversation, right? So I would just address it and sort of almost um, express surprise at the use of the terminology because I don't believe it's necessary. How would you deal with sassiness? Um, we'll talk about a topic like uh, intersexual dynamics. She will keep debating against my point of view. How to come off as less logical. Don't don't get into those conversations right i mean that at some point during that conversation you're letting it fall into this area of logical um breakdown of you know politics and religion and anything like that it's just a mood killer it's exactly what people don't want to talk about when they're trying to escape from the everyday world and have some fun it's like almost we're trying to move on to a, a plane of having fun and, and being easy and as soon as you let the conversation go there, it's very difficult to, to, to go back and to create a sense of relaxed fun and tension um, in the exciting sense. So I just wouldn't debate, debate against her point of view um, on any of these things. I would just move the conversation, right? What do you want to learn about her? You don't want to talk politics with her, do you? Do you want to go on a date and talk about politics? I don't. I just don't find it that interesting to talk about politics in general. Um, you know, it's what the YouTube videos are for. Um, so I, I would just not let it go there. I would just bring the conversation back onto what I'm interested in. You know, where does she want to go? What she's like? Um, what are her interests? What make what makes her inspired? What's she good at? What what are some cool experiences she's had in her life? You know, I'll always try and keep the conversation on what I want to know about her and I hope that she will keep it on what she wants to know about me and then that's where some sort of energy um, maybe sexual energy or romantic energy is going to come from it's going to come from a sense that you you're learning about each other you don't learn about each other through politics and religion necessarily because most people's opinions are just influenced by the news source that they're looking at if she's watching BBC news she's going to think one thing if she's watching CNN she's going to think another thing if she's watching Fox news she's going to think another thing and anyone that moves the conversation onto politics is generally watching one news channel and you're debating a corporation. You're not debating an individual. So I don't want to bring a conversation somewhere where it relies on regurgitated points of view. I want it to be completely personal. Yeah. Countries you'd recommend to escape UK winter, November to March. Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, Colombia. Um, South America is amazing. I've heard Thailand's good at those times as well. Um, but if you haven't been to Latin America, it's it's a real trial by fire. It's really good fun. So I'd recommend going over there. And it's a whole new kettle of fish, the way communication happens over there. It's much less build up. It's much more straightforward. It's much more direct and, and um, expressive. So it's a really, really great place to visit. If you want to go to Rio, I've got some, uh, I know a lot of people over there. I'm renting a house over there. Uh, so, yeah, so let me know if you want to go there. However, I want to come back to that. There is also this idea that you don't need to escape it. Right? I mean, I'm here right now, right next to a swimming pool in this beautiful building. And I don't feel like even when it's raining, I really need to, to escape. Right, so the idea of escaping your city is based on the idea that oh, it's cold outside, um, so it's harder and it's lonelier. But it's like, what if you situate yourself in a in a part of the country or city that's going to be good anyway? What if you can find a space? Right, people who go to the Soho House, Shoreditch House, in the winter they can just spend their whole time there. They've got everything. They've got a rooftop. They've got bars. They've got co-working space. They've got purely social spaces, cinema rooms, gyms. You can even optimize your own city so that it's not so dull in the winter. And why not do that? And if it's a problem with finances or a problem with something else, what can you do to optimize that part of your life to accommodate the goals that you want? And that's something you should strongly consider. 
hey man yeah i have been to singapore and uh i did but i didn't i went there when i was a bit younger and um i was in a relationship so i didn't but i you know i did have some fun um i think i, I don't know i think in singapore it's probably great to to meet people because there's a big expat community there's some great clubs and bars it's quite cliquey from what i remember but it's also not so difficult to enter those cliques and to meet um, those people at the sort of social events and if you are not from that area it'll be very easy to network with other expats and people moving in um no it's not necessarily it's not necessarily that she's attracted to you if she wants to keep pressuring you about your point of view on politics or something like that um it, it could just be that it's more entertaining than than having another conversation right it's a bit more drama is a bit more um emotion if you're expressing a point of view that and she's heard differently and she wants to dig into that and figure out what you're about and see if see if you know it makes you nervous it's not necessarily because she likes you it could just be because your the interactions not in an, in that space of easygoing friendly conversation and so it's more entertaining to play around and to, to to try and make you nervous or make you back down from your point of view than it is to have um, a light-hearted conversation. Um, I believe you're not big on religion, but I may be wrong. How do you encourage your audience to practice cold approach if they are abstinent, don't drink alcohol, etc.? Um, I, I wouldn't say I'm big on religion. Um, I, I'm not, I don't necessarily subscribe to any particular religion myself, but I do believe that um, systems are important and systems that have stood the test of time are even more sacred for reasons that we don't understand. And I think that each country, the religion that they've developed with has provided structural foundations for that country that uphold a load of other systems and structures and it's like a house of cards where if you remove one you remove everything else and so i i think that it's it's dangerous to just drop religion altogether because there's so many of the other systems that we rely on have grown out of that and even if it would be helpful for us to move away from religion in the future and i'm not saying that's the case but even if it were it would be a mistake to just destroy it and start again because we know what happens when you just just take apart all of the systems that have been upholding a place and start again every single time it leads to to some sort of wacky banana republic or um or dangerous revolution and so i think that we need to be really careful about um about d discarding religion altogether because i think fundamentally a lot of our systems are based on it however to answer your question how do you encourage your audience to practice if they are abstinent, don't drink alcohol, etc.? I'm not drinking alcohol at the moment, and I'm not really valuing. Um, I'm valuing more just sort of clarity, peace of mind, order, and um, and presence at the moment. Um, creating some sort of structure that includes physical health, mental health, um, uh, some sort of consistent wealth building activity and my my family friends and um and dating and relationships and it's not about volume or quantity it's not like you need to be um you know you need to be going out and drinking and partying and all of this i don't believe that i think it's better not to drink i think everyone's better if they don't drink to some extent hey buddy how you doing um so how would i encourage them i'd say keep doing what you're doing if you're able to go out and have fun with friends and not drink alcohol and nurture that social muscle without the help of things like alcohol or um certain certain inputs that are unnecessary and i advise you keep going with that and don't rely on them um and again that's a step-by-step -step process right it's difficult especially when loads of other people are drinking and you're not drinking to go out and become fun and sociable like them but really it's just the first 30 minutes where you feel that kind of that weight of normality and the alcohol gets rid of that. But if you go for 30 minutes and you start speaking, you no longer need the alcohol. You actually find that you have energy and clarity um, and you, you don't need the alcohol, it's just a shortcut. Um, 
at the moment no because i don't want that at the moment that's not what i'm looking for um but i obviously have had that in the past it's just not in line with my goals at the moment um am i going to travel in europe i imagine i'll visit some places but at the moment i'm i'm really happy in london um and i really want to start building something solid here i want to help you guys here and whenever i travel i'm moving away from um you know the people that i want to be helping so my greatest desire for the moment for at least until december is to stay in london get this course going help you guys as much as i can keep releasing uh, great youtube content from london and then maybe i'll travel to rome with a friend or to a few other european countries before i head back to brazil but for the moment my sights are set on london this is london man this is um canary wharf beautiful canary wharf actually so yeah secret location 20 floors up in canary wharf how do you quantify the level of maturity is having 20 experiences considered in early and i don't quantify it man you, you, you if you watch my channel you know i don't quantify it i don't like to think about that because it draws you into comparisons against others which i don't think are helpful in this arena it draws you into having bullshit goals that you think are important because other people are doing them when they're not actually important for you do not qu quantify your level of maturity focus on what your goal is for you not for other people what do you actually want and then what action do you need to take in order to achieve that goal? There is no maturity. There is no level. There is nothing. I just released a video yes, uh, yesterday. Um, and I think most of the interactions in it weren't very good. You know, I don't think of it as good and bad, but they weren't particularly engaging. Um, at times I was overly energetic or a little <laughs> bit robotic. And that happens at any level. And to deny that is to, I think, deny something really important, which is humility. It's like, fine, you can be competitive. Fine, you can strive for the best. But if you're constantly pretending that you're better than you are or painfully seeking that which you're not already, it's just a recipe for, for how can you, imagine, imagine being on your deathbed and looking back at all the time you spent, you know, believing that you're not good enough yet believing that you always needed to reach the next level and then just thinking how ultimately pointless it all was when you could have been living exactly the life that you wanted with clarity um and had exactly what you wanted so i don't quantify any of it um but the, but you know habit building is really important so the more you can do the better because you really want this to be a habit and you want this to be a part of your your normal life Uh, no, I have not heard about this man, um, but I might research him. Yes, brother, moving up in the world. That's, that's how I see it. Um, but in my world, right? In my world. Uh, and so we've all got to just focus on moving up in our own worlds and not worry about other people and not question our decisions too much. Sometimes, you know, when I'm doing videos I question them you know is it good enough should I be doing something different is this the right course you've got to trust yourself for the last however many months or years more than the, the part of you right in this moment right if you've made this decision it's because you believe in it and questioning it's just going to slow you down even if you decide to change your course or move in a different direction that has to come from movement in this moment you, do, you redirect you recalibrate you can't just stop and then start something else. It's always got to be like a, a one motion. Life is one motion. I would advise going there, man, and talking to one of them. I don't consider people in a group as a group of people. I consider it individual persons who are standing near to each other, right? So again, it's this kind of narratives these ideas that we make up by oh that's scary because it's a group of people it's like no it's a collection of individuals and if you want to talk to one or two of those individuals then you should treat them as individuals they don't want to be treated as a group they want to be treated as individuals so even if you're not very experienced in the social arena i would still advise you to go to these places look at the paintings or look at whatever the artifacts are in the museum and then discuss them with individuals or bring them into light. And this social side is something that I'm covering in 
the six week course as well. It's not just about um, cold approach. It's about figuring out how to design your social life in a way that's most productive for you. But people will still compare, comparing how much. Money. Yes, it is like that. Um, but comparing how much money you acquire is just as futile and pointless as comparing how many approaches you've done or what level you're at or any of the other stuff. It's all meaningless because you're forgetting that you're forgetting what's important to you. You should have clarity about what your priorities are, right? What are your priorities? What is important to you? And do these sort of goals that you that have just come into your head, do they actually align with what is important to you and what is a priority. No, I don't have any routine. I just meditate on the transport to get to where I'm going. I I give myself a pep talk before, you know, I just be basically I just say to myself, let's go, let's let's go make it happen. However I'm feeling, whatever ups and downs I go through, let's make it happen and let's keep pushing until the end. And then I set myself a goal, a few locations to go to. Um, sometimes a number that I, I need to do and then I just press on through good and through bad through happy and through sad through high energy and low energy through um, security and insecurity I just push through because I know that after the fact none of it's going to matter my mood won't matter to me the following day all that will matter is what I did what I committed to what I followed through on yeah man I agree it's far from perfect and I think a lot of people that are new to the channel don't really see that. They don't see that um, I'm not here trying to show you how to be good, right? I'm trying to help you to understand that this is a healthy way to live your life and to pursue it and to know that you're not chasing this idea of the perfect person. You're going out and taking the right action that you know is going to improve your life in the future and and following through on it and becoming courageous it's not about showing off or showing that you're good at something i don't believe that anyone is good or bad i've seen the best people have terrible days and people who are not considered good have amazing days and um at least by their standards even more so and so it's just not about that and it's not a productive frame we've got to be patient we've got to have our own goals we've got to be living in our own world and not be so affected by all of the inputs coming in from other people and other other means. Um, yeah, sometimes you run out of topics. Just focus on what you want to learn. That's all I'll say about that. So if you're sat for an hour and you're focused on like what you want to learn, and that doesn't have to just be like, oh, wh wh how many sisters do you have? How many brothers do you have? It's like learning about experiences they've had and how they affected them, right? Getting it into that more sensorial, um, area of like what's the best experience you've had what's a crazy experience you've had what was like the most exciting moment of this you know I'll, I'll get into a question like the question game asking questions about things that i'm really interested in and that are sensory that involve feeling and going into the mindsets and and dreams and things like that it's trying to make it more personal yeah true Cool guys, well this has been a pleasure, it's been 40 minutes. Um, as I said, you can find the calendar link in this call. So any personal questions or any interest in coaching or the six week course, uh, drop me a message in, in, in on, uh, arrange a call in the calendar link and, and we'll talk. Um, it's a pleasure doing this for you guys. Um, I appreciate the ongoing support, really I do. And yeah, I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Cool, take care guys, bye.